Hello, how's everybody doing today? My name is Evan Freiberger, and today we're going to be talking about this tropical system that is off of the eastern coast of Florida. You can see that actually has some convection bubbling up, and it's been a little bit. The chances have been slowly rising. Let's talk about that. So this system here over the next two days has a 40% chance of forming into a tropical depression and a seven-day chance of 40%, but it's going to go into the eastern coast of Florida before, you know, seven days. So we're going to be watching this storm as it comes through it's going to bring some impacts maybe a little bit of storm surge maybe a small tornado threat and also potentially some flooding issues with this storm it is a smaller storm than what we just experienced over there uh, near texas but it's something that we are going to have to keep an eye on i mean uh, as you can see this thing has definitely got a little bit of spin to it and it is going to bring some impacts but I, I do think it's going to be on the lower side of things it's definitely not anything to freak out about but we'll be breaking down kind of some of the uh, kinematics with the storm just so you guys can um and some of the the details and information with the storm as well just so you guys can know what to do and know what to plan for as the storm comes through all right next we're going to look at some model data to kind of get an understanding of where this thing is going to go and where the heaviest precipitation is going to fall uh, as you can see uh, right now it's not really too organized of a system you know it is spinning a little bit but it's not really that much of an organized low pressure system we'll look at it in satellite for a little bit because there is some spin uh with this storm and in some activity in terms of thunderstorms happening near the center of that spin which is why I think these chances are kind of slowly upticking, uh, regardless of what the uh, models are saying, because most models have had this as a pretty weak storm. Uh, but yeah, let's kind of check this out. Let's push this forward. Uh, this is starting today. As you can see, this thing is still swirling out there going into tomorrow. It's pretty close there to the uh, eastern Florida coast uh, over there near jo uh, Georgia as well. And you can see it starts to form a little bit more of an organized low pressure system indicated by this little closed circle there. And that continues to push off. Uh, to the north and east but i mean it, not really a whole lot of rain with this storm not a very organized system at that i mean we're not really talking about you know a whole lot of rain uh maybe a little bit of uh, wind shear can be created by this creating a small tornado threat uh but i mean it, it's really not that going to be that impactful of a storm so you know you're going to see a lot of videos online saying uh, you know this is going to be the the you know a, an impactful storm you know better prepare prepare now um you know honestly you could probably sit on your front porch and as long as you're not you know under any some lightning or you know any uh you know dangerous uh tornado warnings or anything you're gonna be a-okay uh with this storm i would definitely stay off the coast though as this thing uh comes through but it looks like it's gonna be making landfall sometime uh by uh, tomorrow uh you know tomorrow evening you know over there you can see that little center of the low pressure system uh over there at least according to the gfx uh this is the euro solution here so let's kind of look at that the euro has a little bit more rain initially uh, as that pushes off uh, to the north and east, it kind of meanders a little bit more. And then as we get into tomorrow afternoon, this thing, it, it makes landfall a little bit later than what the GFS is saying. Sometime around like 3 or 4, maybe 5 p.m. Uh, over there in northern Florida, but kind of in the same area that the GFS is saying. Again, you know, it's not going to be too strong of a system, uh, but uh, it's definitely something to keep an eye on as it comes through, just in case something does, um, you know, end up spinning up in terms of that tornado there and maybe a small um you know coastal flooding threat there uh, also uh, we have another model here this is the icon model it's kind of compare and contrast bring this up forward you can see you know it also has this storm uh, making landfall maybe a little bit further to the south there in florida but again still relatively a weak storm i mean we're not really talking about a powerhouse of a storm on any of these models and this one is also uh friday afternoon a little bit later so you know sometime in between you know lunchtime tomorrow and the evening is when we're going to be seeing this storm kind of push in to the eastern coast uh, of Florida. But, you know, certainly uh, something to keep an eye on, but I really don't think it's going to be too big of an issue for any of the folks there uh, in Florida. All right, looking at the satellite view here, you can see that we do have a little bit of a swirl right here in this region. Uh, you can see that there is some spin uh, with this storm near the surface. And we're also starting to see, you see some of these bubbling clouds over here on the northern side of it. We are starting to see some convection uh, starting to pick up there. So, uh, I mean, there's Florida right there. This thing is expected to kind of track up into this region somewhere, um, making landfall somewhere in southern Georgia or northern Florida. But again, it's going to be a tropical depression, you know, winds up to 35 miles per hour, maybe a tropical storm. We'll be talking about some of the differences on wider uh, range of models here. But I mean, overall, 
you know, this isn't really, you know, bringing too much moisture, but the, it, you know, it could drop maybe an inch or so of rain, um, maybe a little bit higher, three or four inches over a longer period of time after this thing is all said and done. But again, you know, we're not really talking about too much of an impactful storm, maybe like a foot to three feet of storm surge on the beaches. You know, rip tides are definitely going to be an issue, but that's going to be about it. Now, if you look at the current tracks of this storm in terms of the spaghetti models here, you can uh, see these are multiple models uh, kind of all showing different problems possibilities different scenarios with this storm and where it could go and as you can see most of them the mass majority of them are pulling them into north florida kind of like what the gfs and the euro and the icon were saying and and then it kind of tracks up to the north and east after that but at this point you know that's going to be a post tropical system which means it's you know not really bringing much of any impacts, maybe still a little bit of a tornado threat. But again, you know, we're probably going to be talking like a 2% quite low uh, tornado threat there. But I mean, definitely uh, going to be tracking in going to be Florida's potential first tropical depression uh, of the year. If you come over here and look at the intensity guidance, you can see that most models do not bring this to tropical storms. Some of them, though, do bring it pretty close. So, you know, there is, I guess, still a scenario, but maybe it hits a little bit warmer uh, pockets of water than what is forecasted and then all of a sudden you know you can see this thing just barely nose up into a tropical storm but you know the range of winds and storm surge that we are anticipating with this storm are going to be somewhere in between you know uh, 30 to 40 maybe yeah about 30 to 40 mile per hour winds with this storm so some power on it just will be possible but again it's going to be kind of a short-lived storm and then uh, after that uh, you know we're talking maybe like one to at max four feet of storm surge other than that we have an one little area here, uh, down here, 20% chance of forming. Uh, that's going to be going up into the Gulf of Mexico and most likely into Mexico again. Going to bring some similar impacts, you know. But if that, uh, the tropical storm fo force wind field is a little bit smaller with this one, which is kind of a possibility here, uh, it's not going to bring as much impact to the United States. So we're going to be keeping an eye on that. It's kind of far away um, in the models. But, uh, you know, as it gets closer, if anything changes, it's going to bring any threats to the United States. We'll go into it more in detail, kind of like what we did with this forecast. Also, Alberto is now a tropical depression with uh, 35 mile per hour winds, and that is in Mexico uh, as well, but it's going to be dying shortly over the mountains there in Mexico. In terms of today, kind of our main focus of severe weather is going to be up here in the northeast. We've got a, uh, a, a severe thunderstorm watch already uh, with a severe thunderstorm uh, popping up in Vermont there. You can see that by that yellow polygon there. Yeah, we got a severe thunderstorm watch out here for northern New York going up into Vermont, uh, New Hampshire, Maine. We're not really expecting tornadoes uh, with these storms today, just mainly a small severe weather threat. Um, and yeah, you know, we're, we're talking potentially some marginal winds up to 60 miles per hour, uh, maybe some smaller hail to larger hail there, potentially up to an inch. You know, if you guys live in these areas, you know, you get put under one these yellow polygons all you got to do is be indoors and away from windows i will say the infrastructure out here isn't really built for you know a whole lot of severe weather so you know just be ready for power outages out there and watch out for those bigger trees i know in vermont and new hampshire you guys got a lot of those big trees out there so just make sure that you know if you start to see them sway you hear some cracking in the trees uh to, you know and you're concerned about the trees falling on your house and you, you want to know what to do just get on the lowest floor of your house into the most interior portion of your house to give you as many layers uh of infrastructure in between you and that falling tree if it does fall again it's a low chance that that happens but definitely um you know take proper precautions if that is something that you are worried about and yeah you can see that they have highlighted a slight risk out in this area and then again that's going to be for damaging winds and hail a marginal risk extends around that all the way into pennsylvania parts of ohio and michigan again not super concerned about this threat up here some marginal severe weather could happen but the, again the tornado risk is going to be really low out here um you know over here and um, we also have another other slight risk over here in parts of Nebraska, Wyoming, also Colorado as well. We also have a small tornado risk mainly over here in Nebraska, like a 2%, barely uh, any threat at all. But, you know, something to definitely keep an eye on if you are out there kind of up here near like Alliance, Scotts Bluff and Torrington. And then further up to the north, we've got a uh, another marginal risk up here in Montana. And that's going to be mainly for damaging winds there. But, you know, if you live in any of these regions, just make sure you are weather aware today. Not going to be super impactful like some of these other days, but definitely going to be a 
enough uh, to where it could be ruining some outdoor plants. Coming up into the next day, as you can see, we do have another slight risk for severe weather. That's going to be over there in South Dakota and northern Nebraska, again, with a marginal risk extending into Wisconsin all the way down into Utah and parts of uh, in parts of Arizona. And then another marginal risk up here in the northeast for parts of Ohio going into Pennsylvania, southern New York, uh, it's kind of southwestern Massachusetts and parts of Connecticut there. Uh, and and yeah, I mean, it's it's um, it's a little area here for another uh, elevated risk of severe weather. Uh, nothing too crazy out there. We're mainly just talking, um, you know, a, a very small tornado threat over here in northern Nebraska going into South Dakota and Minnesota, kind of northwestern Iowa and extreme southeastern Wyoming. Uh, damaging winds are going to be the biggest threat of this uh, event, uh, as you can see, uh, mainly centered over where that slight risk region is uh, over here uh, in the northern plains. And then we also have a hail risk out there as well. Good news, hail is not going to be too much of a problem up there in the northeast uh, on the next day. But yeah, it seems like we've entered into the kind of quiet portions of um, of the summer months. I do think, you know, down the line, we could get some stronger storms. We're kind of entering into that short wave derecho season. But, uh, you know, those are pretty hard to predict, uh, you know, further out in the future. But, you know, it is going to be eventually turning into somewhat of a problem when we start to see uh, more attempts of derecho, especially up here uh, in the northern United States. So far, we're not really seeing any signs of that developing in the short term. But, you know, if anything changes, obviously, I'm going to let you guys know. I'm also going to try to be doing more forecasts uh, for you guys as well. So thank you guys for watching. Have a wonderful rest of your day, and I'll see you guys on the next video. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe button as well before you go. See you later.